The Empty Chair is proudly sponsored by the Merrimack Valley Chiropractic Society. We've been managing pain without drugs for over a century. This Empty Chair represents the addict who died today, not knowing recovery was possible. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Empty Chair, Exposing Addiction. And uh, tonight uh, is, again, one of those sadder occasions where we put a face on the empty chair, and we're very fortunate to have two courageous people come in again and uh, share their story and uh, show everybody out there that this can happen to anybody regardless of where you live, how much money you have or anything. It doesn't discriminate. And before I introduce my guest, I want to introduce my co-host. You've seen her a couple of times on the show before. This is my wife Francine. And as I lose my voice, hopefully she'll be able to take over the show for us. But uh, right now I, I really would like to introduce Two people who I wish I had never met. And I say that because how much I care for you and what you've been through. But this is Anne Marie, and Jim Sanfagner, who coincidentally grew up across the street from me <laughs> when right. we were kids and now lives in New Hampshire. Yeah. So uh, what I'd like you both to do, obviously I'm thrilled that you're here and I commend you for doing it because it's not an easy thing. But maybe you can tell us a little bit about Jacqueline prior to her, you know, getting involved with uh, drugs. And just take a deep breath and relax and we'll be good. So either one of you can start off. Jacqueline um, was, uh, she was a very happy child. She had lots of energy and she was excited about lots of things. She loved to dress up and put on my jewelry and my hats and her grandmother's. Um, but I noticed early on that sometimes she would not blend well with other children, always difficult. And she did in school um, have an IPP for stuttering or speech, something like that. And, um, but I, I had always thought something just wasn't right. So for years and years and years, I brought Jacqueline to doctors. Nobody would say, I said, something's wrong. You know, and maybe the last year of her life, they started giving her medicine for bipolar. Mm. And I mean, you just, she didn't click every single box to begin with. So she couldn't have it, right? They've changed since then. Mm. You know, and I think if this was caught earlier, things would have been a lot different. Mm -hmm. No, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. So. When did you notice her having a problem with drugs? Now, wait, before we go in, how old was Jack when she died? She was 25. 25, okay. So when did you, when did you start suspecting there might be a problem? With drugs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she had other problems with other people. She had a bad, bad temper. But, you know, Anne Marie has had arthritis most of her life, along with the, the knees, as I say. So she's had a lot of medication in the house. And strong medication. Strong medication for the pain. Yeah. And so there were times when Anne Marie would say to me, you know, where are my pills, Jim? You know, I, I don't know where they are. You know, they're misplaced or something. And, you know, possibly I'd find them. But then she said, you know, I had 30 in here. Now I only have like 20, or whatever the pills were. So. She was taking the pills, 
Now, I don't know whether she was using them. She could have been using them and maybe selling a few to get money for herself. But, but that's when uh, I think we first noticed that there was, a, there was a problem with the pills. She didn't have any of her own, really. Uh, well, she took Prozac for her moods. Yeah, that was later. Later. Yeah, yeah. 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 So how old was she when you started thinking she might have a, a drug problem? We really didn't think of that. Um, I guess we could say maybe high school. Beginning of high school. Okay. Beginning yeah. of high school. Some place in there. Yeah, the beginning of high school. Mm -hmm. You know. But you could never really tell because she was so emotional, really happy really down mm. yeah because of the bipolar yeah, yeah. you know mm. and then you're going through puberty and all mm. of the hormones exactly. so i mean well you know you have a lot yeah. of a lot of kids with substance abuse problem are dual diagnosed depression mm -hmm. bipolar yeah. various things like that uh so when she was in school did you notice like the crowd she hung out with, kids, you liked them, you didn't like them, you knew them, you didn't know them. I didn't, I didn't like a lot of the kids she hung out with, absolutely, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, she was a bit of an introvert. And because of the bipolar, as I say, she was up or she was down. But right. be, being an introvert, you know, she was kind of like a wallflower and she was uncomfortable with situations at first. And then as she became more comfortable with it, she would join in, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, you know, feel freer with, with talking with people. But there were, you know, a lot of, she was not a joiner, okay, with, with, with things, and, and, and I think that was part of the problem of her being an introvert, staying within herself and, and needing something else eventually to help her get through right. this well, tough time. Social, if she had some yeah. social issues yeah. when yeah. you're young, you know, it's difficult if you don't feel like you fit in. Yeah. Colleen kind of felt that way too. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, she didn't have the same issues in as far as, you know, being bipolar, but she had issues about her own appearance and who liked her, who didn't like her. She was a little bit overweight. So when you're a teen or pri you know, preteen, those That's things are hard. so important. And right. um, having social skills and having a lot of friends is very important. So she probably started out feeling, you know, inadequate, and and then that would lead to other things. Yeah, you know? and she bumped into a crowd that accepted her. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. She she was not a joiner to things. I mean, we, we signed her up for dance lessons. She did that for a short while. We offered, you know, music lessons. Uh, we, you know, she, she went ice skating for a while. We bought her some skates, you know, and took her places. And we became a den mother, so she joined the, the Girl, Scouts. Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts, whatever. <laughs> Girl Scouts. Yeah. And, and, you know, she did that for a short while. Short and then, time. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, kind of receded from that, you know, yeah. because she just didn't... Uh, for whatever reason, didn't feel like you say uh, she belonged. She didn't feel comfortable. Didn't feel comfortable yeah. with it. You she know? didn't like it that much. No, she I know. just didn't. She yeah. just didn't have mm. those kinds of interests. Yeah, yeah. When she when she was a uh, you know be, just before high school, I guess, or just just the beginning of high school, we even signed her up for you know we we sent her to Barbizon School in Boston for a year, figuring that would help her a little bit with her self esteem. Yeah. Okay, let her become more comfortable with herself and if you're more comfortable with yourself then you can handle other situations as well right you know and uh it maybe did help her uh she did well there but long term obviously you know that that, that wasn't faded. her passion yeah, yeah. now do you, when, mean, when she was doing this barbazon school uh, do you feel she was into the drug scene pretty good by then or no no, no not yet before that no no, no. So when did you notice that my daughter has a real drug problem? Uh, because, you know, when I found out, when when my daughter worked, they called up and found out she had stole from the cash register. That's when we they, found they out. They told us yeah, that she had yeah. a drug problem. We were in the dock for about five years. Yeah, well, I, I think it was in, later in high school. Was it maybe a junior, senior in high school? Mm. More yeah. so. But, I mean, I don't even think we thought she had a drug problem. Mm. 
Well, you had been thinking that she had some problems for right along. Right. Yes. So it's, so it's I mean, at adolescence, adolescence, I think that's normal for kids to not feel good about themselves. But, you know, the more successes they have in doing something, the better, you know, they feel about themselves and more self-esteem, um, you know, they begin to have. So when she got to that point, you probably just thought it was still part mm -hmm. of her you know, her bipolar maybe, and didn't even have an idea that it was as serious as it was? Well, she did start getting arrested. Oh, okay. <laughs> For? Then we, who knows? Well, she, she, uh, So many times I can't tell you. Yeah. She, was, she was involved with, with, a, with a, a brownie incident at the high school. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just one of the times. That was one of the signs, but you know, yeah. that was the aggression. Could have been from the, the bipolar, mm -hmm. or maybe the drugs kicking in and kicking out, affecting her. Okay. But, uh, so uh, some behavioral issues yeah, that acting absolutely. out maybe. Loads yeah. of yeah. behavioral issues. Okay, well let's fast forward. Now she's got a blown out drug problem. Well, we found out about that um, two years ago. When, okay. she, when she had OD'd, right? Well, she was trying to steal my medicine. As well. Okay. Yeah. And I stopped her from running out of the house with it. Okay. Um, and I had just had two knee operations, so I wasn't You weren't good. physically capable no. of. But I did stop you her. Did. And, she go, and then on the way out, she says, I'm going to go out and overdose tonight and, you know, like spit it in your face type of thing and yeah, then you her get, anger yeah. yes well she did mm -hmm. she didn't plan it I'm sure but it happened and she was rushed to uh, Merrimack Valley Hospital okay okay and I was really angry at her of course yeah there was a lot of anger now when she OD was it from heroin or yes now, so you knew then that she was on heroin. That's what we knew. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So now she has the OD. Right. And they save her. Yeah. Okay. So what steps did you guys take next? Well, we wanted to take her, obviously, to get treatment. And uh, we... Uh, did we have the intervention before Hampstead, I think it was, right? Mm -hmm. We had, an we, had, yes. we had an intervention at the house. Good. We had all the immediate family over. Wonderful. And I had... Uh, Friends, people we know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I picked her up and we kind of surprised her. She didn't know why I was picking her up and bringing her to the house. And, uh, had she moved out? Was she living no, out she, out? she, she was, well, well, that's another story. We'll she get into that. She moved in and out a lot. <laughs> yeah. We had to ask her to leave a couple of times yeah. for, for different that reasons. Goes along with but that. she was sitting in the chair and she sort of, you know, slid down and wasn't sure what was going on. She was overwhelmed with everybody being there and are talking about this problem. And as most kids do, she was in total denial. I don't have a problem. Yeah. I don't you know, do heroin. I don't do heroin. You know, why? Yeah. Seal? This is, this is what I'm sure you've heard before, Phil, you know, yeah. in talking with other people. It, and, you know, it, and it's, you know, you know, you're in disbelief sometimes. How did this happen to, you know, to my kid and our, our family? Our daughter, yeah. You know, our daughter. But, uh, she was overwhelmed. I didn't have a, I don't have a problem. Everybody was there. Emory's father was there, you know, and, and talking. And she just didn't agree that she had a problem. Well, she ended up leaving that night, I guess, mm -hmm. and going someplace, right. you know, again, in, in frustration and in anger. And, and so she leaving. wouldn't accept any help, basically, because that's what you were trying to do. Yes, that's right. Not yeah. at that point. Yeah. Now, tell me, did it ever get to a point where she actually went for treatment? Yes. Yes. Okay. Once you kind of when she first overdosed and was in the hospital, they resuscitated her. I probably used Narcan, and um, she was angry then, but she had no place to go. Yeah. So I took her back, and I said, "You have to have treatment." I had it set up so we could go to Hampstead Hospital. Jackie decides she doesn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. When we're in the ER, and she said to me, I'm gonna pepper spray you if you say another word or something. 
you know, and so, she, but after evaluation, the doctor came up with, oh, she is not um, a threat to others or herself, or herself at this minute. She was just threatening yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. 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 She's you always that? a threat. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, unfortunately, I do believe yeah. it yeah. because I've heard it so many other times. Yeah. You know, I, I, this is something that baffles my mind. I'm only going to take one second to say it. Anybody who ODs is a threat to themselves. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. There's no question. Yeah. They're brought back from Narcan. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not going to get on. That's a whole other show. Well, <laughs> let's just hope that they're moving forward with yeah. that, and, you know, and yes. things are okay. starting to change. But so did she eventually get into a program? She went into a program in Haverhill. Well, back up a minute. We went, we went to Hampstead Hospital. Yeah. And, and, and she agreed to go there with us after this intervention. We went to the office. We filled out the paperwork. We had insurance to cover it. Jackie talked with us and, and counsel or whatever. And then the counsel took her in one-on-one -on -one and talked with her. Well, apparently, in one of her bipolar conditions, you know, her you know, Dr. Jekyll state, she said, you know, I don't like this. I don't want to do it. Yeah. And she walked out. Yeah. yeah. And okay. even though she's in our care, custody, and control, if you will, she's over 18. Yeah. No. We have no control over that. No, none whatsoever. And, 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 and there's something wrong with that system. Definitely is. And in New Hampshire, it's even worse. In yeah. Massachusetts, I try to get my parents to lie through their teeth, and we can get our kids sectioned. You don't mm. have that in New Hampshire, and that's a shame. Yeah. And maybe that is something that will change. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope it'll change, because... Uh, you know, if, if he had gotten treatment, stayed in the hospital for, you know, whatever length of time it took. Might have helped. Might have helped. I'm just going to interrupt That's you. That's right. I know I don't usually do this. Do you, uh, Val, can you tell me what we have a time left? Nine. Nine. We have 15 minutes? Nine. Nine minutes left? Wow. Okay. <laughs> I told you this is going to go fast. Yeah. Now we do have to fast forward. Okay. Okay. Now. The time came, was she, uh, well, you said you went to Haverhill. Yes. Would you go on methadone? No, no? she went to um, a counseling center. Oh, okay. Oh, so it wasn't really a program. Mm. It wasn't an in-house. No, she didn't no, stay okay. in. No, no. So she never like really a... did an in-house program. No. No. She, okay. She wouldn't do one. Well. So she let, do let's, it. I'm sorry, we're going to have to really fast. She has that day that I'm sure will be with you forever. Why don't you lead us up to the, the day or the phone call of what she happened? She was very happy that summer. Uh, Jim bought a car for her. Well, she was supposed to pay for it, but... Um, and she had a boyfriend and she seemed happy. And a good job. And a job. You know, she hadn't had a job in five years. Because of the, wow. because of the arrest. And know? we just thought they lost the uh, application yeah. or something. But they hired her. And she was happy at her job. And she was doing really well. Was she still using then? We too? didn't think so. Okay. But, but in but retrospect. She must have been. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't getting yeah. any help, so she must have so, been. She, 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 was, she was at our house. And she was going to stay at her boyfriend's house who was in Salisbury, his grandmother's house actually, mm -hmm. in Salisbury. So she left that night, they were gonna to go to a restaurant, have dinner, and then she was planning on working the next day. And she said, uh, I'll be home tomorrow morning, Dad. And I said, uh, okay, but you know, give me a call for us because I'll have the alarm on the house. And she said, well, forget it, I won't come home then. That's all right. I said, no. And she said, oh, that's okay, I won't come home. Well, that afternoon, we, I had gone to work. I left our dog at our other daughter's house and I had, Pick the dog up at whatever, 5, 5.30 or whatever, and I'm driving home. Anne Marie was at the Cape with some of her girlfriends that weekend. She rarely goes away, which is a sad weekend. She was with four, several of her friends for four or five days yeah. at the Cape. So I was at home alone, and uh, while I'm driving home, my son-in-law called me on the cell phone. He says, Jim, has anybody reached out to you about Jackie? And I said, no. What happened? Car accident or something, you know? He said, hang on, I'll call you back. And then he called me back. He had received online social media condolences. That's how he found out. Oh my gosh. You know? So it hit Facebook before. Hit you Facebook even before knew we about even knew. Oh Absolutely my gosh. right. 
you know? So, wow. so I said, no, I said, no, uh, uh, Mike, uh, nobody's reached out to me. I said, uh, I'll be home in 15 minutes. I said, you know, keep me, keep me posted what's going on. Well, after I got home, uh, Sarah and Mike came, they had heard, and I guess they confirmed, they called me and told me. And of course, you know, I was devastated. And then Absolutely. the police ended up coming to the house. Plus the police came to the house. They said they'd been there three or four times and there was no one home. Was home. And they came in and they sat and, you know, we went through, I'm sure you understand what they go through, you know, talking with you. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it was just, just strange how it came about, you know, and sad, you know. That, 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 that social media, you know, was how my son-in-law learned about it and, and daughter and uh, then I learned about it from a phone call. And then I had to call Anne Marie. She was at the Cape. Yeah. Wow. And he asked me been. how my day was and I said it was a wonderful day. And then he told me that Jackie died. And this voice came out of me, or this sound. It wasn't a cry, it was almost a scream. Screech. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I can't believe it now. It's still difficult. Oh, every day is difficult and yeah. it affects you in different ways all the time. I can't even imagine what you're going through. I'm so sorry that you've had to bear all this pain. It's just... Well, as Emory has said though before, she said, you know, the last 10 years were hell, you know, yeah, they but, were. you know, with her, with everything we've gone through, Absolutely. you know, and, and this is part of why we're doing this because you don't want any other parents to have to go through this, you know, you yeah. need to look for some signs. You need to get up there. this is real hell now. I know. You need to be proactive. You know, you got to see what's going on. You know, I mean, yeah. Jack used to wear long sleeves all the time. Why? Partly to to because she was cold, marks, but, yeah. but to hide the track marks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, you, you, you don't think of those things at That's the time. That's right. You don't. Well, You're not the only one to, no. you know, that feels that way after the fact because you see signs later that you say, oh my gosh, why yeah. did, how did I not know that? But you, you didn't know it, you, you know. Yeah, and you want to know something? Yeah, you know, we do. One, yeah. one of the reasons Denial. that we started doing this show, that we formed that group and so forth, is because most people out there are like you, like I was, like Doug Griffin was, Betsy Co We didn't know what was going on. We didn't know what to look for. We didn't know the signs. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always said, if I knew then what I know now, who knows? Yeah. But what you're doing now, you know, can never bring your daughter back. But what you're doing could save could save life. someone else. That's I, right. And, you know, I, I believe that in my heart. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I truly do. Yeah, I know. I've I've had the uh, pleasure to see both of you. Doug Griffin has his uh, meetings at the uh, church, and I find them helpful. And I know you guys keep going, mm -hmm. and I know your healing process is going to be timeless. We're not supposed to lose our kids. Yeah, yeah. but. The courage that you show, because I remember even your obituary, you know, you had the cause of death in there. And whenever I see that, I reach out to every person. You were one of the first people to call, you know, yeah. to be honest, because your and, and your phone number was in the in in in, in, in yeah. your uh, uh, when you answered, you know, yeah. online. Well, I just, well, it takes a lot of courage to to really openly does. say what you know what your loved one we died had to from. Tell the truth. Yeah. Truth is so important. Yeah. It is. And you know, all I'm you, not about hiding anything. No, no. And so, I'm so and glad you said that. And there's nothing to be that. ashamed of because no, you boy. didn't do anything wrong. I mean, you know, your daughter had some problems, and unfortunately, this heroin is just so so rampant. It's out there, and and well, there was fentanyl mixed yeah. in with oh, her heroin. Yeah, which is, oh gosh, so she had the. I know we only have a too. couple of minutes left, right, Val? Uh, <laughs> Time goes I, you know, so fast. I, I'm, I'm so glad you came. I'm so sorry I met you. Uh, for that reason. For that reason, that reason yeah. only. But I gotta be honest, between the likes of you, and marie Doug, his wife, all the other people I've met that by right I should never have met, but the courage you have really gives me the, the anger 
and the persistence to keep working with people like you and, yeah. Doug and everybody mm -hmm. else has been affected. So I want to thank you both for being here. I know I'm going to be seeing a lot more of you. Yeah. And being so brave yeah. to come yeah. to come forward and talk about it. Do you have a yeah. few closing statements? On? Well, you know, I'm, I, I'm so glad I met you. I wish it were different circumstances, but um, I, I can't even say that I know your pain because I just can't even imagine what your pain is um, and how you, you deal with that. But um, just know that you um, you're doing the right thing and take the time you need to mourn the loss of your daughter and everybody is different and you'll you'll get there you'll you'll you will get there and um it was so nice to meet you nice but to meet you, you too and this is what i like you know you people that are watching this show and i know there's a lot of you because we're on youtube and we're on paid media and we're on everything else look at these two people we've had Doug Griffin and his family, and Betsy Cody, and Susan Maskovitz. Look at them. They're not what the parents of drug addicts are supposed to look like. They're just regular middle class people, like me, like Fran, and like all of you out there watching that said, this could never happen to me. So please, and I know the Zanfagnas will agree with me, learn all you can. Look for warning signs for your kids. Don't be afraid to go after them when, when you see a red flag. If they're hanging around with different kids, if they lose an interest in things or whatever, just look into it. Learn all you can. There's community groups out there. There's all kinds of information on the internet. Take a tip from these guys here. Learn all you can because these two are the families of an addict. We don't want to fill up any more chairs. Okay? So, on behalf of my guests, Fran, and again, Jacqueline, Jackie. I hope you'll say a prayer for them tonight, and we'll see you next month on the empty chair. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The Empty Chair is proudly sponsored by the Merrimack Valley Chiropractic Society. We've been managing pain without drugs for over a century.